Today, we'll continue to learn the black shore option pricing theory. Uh, first, let's review what we have learned the last time. Um, we have shown that uh, the weighted, this uh, geometric Brownian motion, which is a martingale, if we choose uh, this weight, all right? Um, so here we we'll name this is a discounted factor. It is as if we're computing some assets current value using this. And actually this asset is uh, this S X of T is modeling our stock price. And this E to the negative alpha T here is the current value of uh, the stock price x of t. So by current, we mean, I mean, uh, we're at t equals zero. And this alpha right here, this alpha right here is called a risk-free rate. Basically, it's our interest rate. And uh, uh, it is if we invest one dollar at t equals zero, we'll get e to the alpha t to the power that amount of dollar at uh, type t. All right. So it's like a risk-free. There is no randomness, no uh, whatever risk involved in this procedure. And now uh, let's uh, continue. Uh, continue. And also uh, by in order that our stock price is a martingale, when we discount it um, to the current time, the risk-free rate has to satisfy this relation, which is alpha equals uh, mu plus sigma square divided by two. Okay, and also uh, I wanna recall that the axis formula x is a geometric Brownian motion which is e to the uh, mu t the drift plus uh, sigma time the standard Brownian motion okay and now we're gonna learn a new term it's called call option what is call option? And today we'll learn how to price this call option. The call option is something uh, about uh, a right. Okay. So first of all, it, it is viable, but it's not any concrete merchandise or something. It's a right to buy a stock at a future date. Okay, so at future date, this is normally called uh, maturity, but let's just say uh, future date is time t. Okay, and at a fixed price. All right, and this price we name it k, which is called a strike price. Okay, and so basically, we can what we can have is, uh, let's say, A and B. Okay, so Alice uh, buys an option from Bob, and what happens is, uh, uh, let's say, um, this option says the following: that is, uh, Alice can buy. Okay. The Tesla a stock share uh, Bob has okay. at let's say uh, seven hundred dollars a share uh, in let's say one year, okay. something like that. By the terms buy. What we mean here is actually Alice has to pay actual money to Bob 
to buy this right. Keep this in mind. Alice hasn't buy or hasn't bought a Tesla share from Bob yet. Alice just bought this right to buy the share. Okay. But after a year, uh, Alice can choose whether to exercise this right or not. So after, let's say, a year, uh, Alice may choose whether to exercise this right. Why we say here may choose is because uh, it actually depends on what Tesla is priced at after a year. Let's assume, so let's say if uh, Tesla uh, is, let's say, uh, $670, you know, after a year at uh, t equal to 1, okay, um, let's say this year, then why would Alice exercise this right to buy Tesla share from Bob at $700? She can just go to uh, the marketplace and say, okay, I want, I just want to buy like a Tesla share and I can buy it from someone else because uh, Tesla share is currently at uh, uh, 60, 670, why would I spend, I mean, more money to pay Bob to buy this, okay? So then, uh, uh, so Alice will choose to not exercise the right. However, What if Tesla stock is 800 at uh, uh, t equals one year? Then, uh, of course, Alice will exercise her right to buy Tesla stock at 700 and then sell Tesla, this 700 a share stock she just bought to the market. And let's say, and immediately she will uh, have the return. All right. And this option is quite unique in that uh, when Tesla stock price, uh, when it's uh, less than the 700 price, the strike price of the option, it's awesome. it's worthless. But uh, if it's more than that, it suddenly it has some value, okay. And the question is, uh, so the question we're trying to ask is, what is a fair price for this option? And we're looking at this price at both the future time t and at uh, current time, which is t equals zero. Okay. First of all, um, on future time t, um, we have used this example to illustrate that this right. Uh, to buy a share of stock has some value, okay? Especially uh, when it is a case when the stock price is higher than the strike price of the option. But now we may also ask the following question. Um, because in this option trading, this scenario, we have a buyer and a seller. So the seller uh, do not want to lose money, right? So as a result, a 
and we want to enforce something called no arbitrage. Okay. So our option uh, has value, um, the value of this option at type t is essentially the stock price subtract uh, the strike price plus, which is if the stock price is higher than the strike price then the value is just the difference, okay? And it's zero if uh, the stock price is less than or equal to this k. Um, the reason for this pricing is what we call no arbitrage. What does arbitrage mean is, uh, uh, so arbitrage, mean is uh, um, it's the opportunity to make money instantly and without any risk okay. and keep this in mind is uh, instantly okay is we can buy something and we sell it instantaneously then let's assume there is no transaction cost or whatsoever um, and we can make money without any risk. So it means, um, so for example, in this scenario, all right, if this option, the current value uh, at um, t equals one is, let's say, um, if the option is worth, Let's say if the option is worth, if it's priced at a 10, then of course uh, Alice will buy this option because it costs 10, right? And then Alice will spend uh, 700 bucks to buy the Tesla stock from Bob and then sell it. Um, at uh, uh, 800 bucks and of course we have instantaneous profit okay which is 90 bucks like without any risk and in order to prevent okay in order to prevent the scenario happens we have to price we have to give a fair price uh, of uh, this option right here, which is uh, um, the amount of money um, this uh, stock is greater than the strike price. But now uh, let's look back at uh, what we have derived. This is the value of the option at time t. Okay, and in order to get how much money we should pay uh, at time zero. And we gotta ask the question: What is the value of this option at t equals zero? And uh, if we use a mathematical formula to represent this, this is the expected value of the discounted price of this option. And the discounted price, uh, in this case, is e to the minus alpha t, and then multiply with with this one. And given um, at zero, we have this price. And in the next video, uh, we're gonna learn how do we compute uh, this expectation.